You want to know about shape keys? You want to know about morph targets? You've come to the right place because that's exactly what we are talking about today. We are starting here in Blender with our just general scene. Let's get all of this deleted and uh, start by adding a uh, cube. We just deleted the default cube. So now let's, let's not do a cube because that makes me look stupid. Let's do a monkey instead because that is also going to uh, allow me to demonstrate the shape keys better. So where do we find the shape keys? We find the shape keys in Blender under the object data properties. And you will immediately see it over here, shape keys. But before we start adding any shape keys, do be aware that once you add a shape key, you will have just told Blender pretty much this is my final model. I'm not going to change too much about this anymore. Specifically in regards to adding modifiers. As you'll be able to see, uh, I, I will add like a subdivision of two levels here. I can apply that, no problem. Let's apply that. Now we add our basis shape key. This is the shape key that tells Blender and eventually Unreal, this is our unmorphed, our base uh, model. This is our mesh that has no deformation to it whatsoever. So if you then go adding modifiers to that, it doesn't play too nicely with it. In Blender, for like just uh, viewing purposes, it, it does it fantastically. But the moment you try to apply it, you will get this error. And you will also get this issue if it applies the modifiers when exporting. So if you're trying to import your shape keys and uh, model into Unreal, and you're not getting your morph targets, showing up in Unreal, it's probably because you have modifiers that are trying to be applied during the export, which is messing up the whole process. So we're going to remove this and we're going to go back to our shape keys. We have our basis shape key, which does exactly what I just told you. This is our unmodified mesh. Let's just shade smooth because it looks a little better. Then we're going to add our first shape key. Um, name it something uh, fun, like uh, let's big, big mouth, big mouth. We're going to make his mouth big. You go into edit mode here and you can go uh, around and let's put on uh, this and we can start maybe pulling some things around a little like this and like that. Uh, you can also use a scope mode, by the way, in order to do something uh, like this, uh, which I'll show you with the second uh, key we're going to be making in a moment here. So as you can see, I, I've made his mouth a little bigger. Uh, it's uh, a very quick and dirty job. But then when we go back into edit mode, it's gone. And that is because the shape key value is still set to zero. Now we can slide between these two uh, versions. So if we think, oh, well, actually the, the full deformation that I just made is a little too strong, we can go back to like 0 0.453 in this case, and that looks a little bit better, right? So. And that's the power of morph targets. That's what they're called in Unreal, shape keys in Blender. Um, because you can do this in Unreal during runtime. And you can randomize this value. So that's where things get very interesting, but that's an entirely separate video. So we've got our big mouth, uh, but then we can also make a second shape key, which will work independently from the one we just made. So let's call this one uh, big ears. And uh, as a little um, hint or tip for you guys, if you're going to use these shape keys in conjunction with the sculpting mode, you want to put them up to a value of one while you're sculpting so you can actually see what you're doing. Unlike in edit mode where you can see the vertices moving around, in sculpting mode, it doesn't show it to you unless the value is set to one. So now going into sculpting mode, we have uh, the ears here. So let, let's pull these around a little and uh, make them a little bigger this way. Again, a fairly quick and dirty way. Should I have done this uh, with uh, symmetry enabled? I definitely should have. Am I going to control Z until um, I'm back where I started and do that? No, because this actually ended up working fairly well. And since I had the big ears shape key selected while I was making those edits, it will be applied to that specific shape key. So now I have one shape key that controls the size of the ears, and I have a different shape key that controls the size of the mouth and very bad deformation. I am way better with sculpting mode. And we can mix and match these until we get something that we are relatively happy with uh, as far as our model goes. So that's what you can do with them in Blender. But now uh, let's just for, um, for good measure set them back to zero, both of them. We can export this 
into an FBX and use it in Unreal. Exporting is really easy. You don't really need to pay attention to any of this going on at all because uh, bake animation, there's, there's nothing being animated here. We don't even have an armature. So adding leaf bones, uh, that kind of stuff, usually I would turn that off. Uh, but you don't need to do any of that because there is no armature. <laughs> So going over into the Unreal Engine, we can then import that FBX file. So while importing, the most important thing that you're probably um, going to need to know is by default, it doesn't see any armature in the uh, FBX file, so it's not going to import it as a skeletal mesh. But in order for it to have the ability to morph and animate, you do need it to be a skeletal mesh. You don't need to apply a skeleton to it whatsoever, it just needs to know you are a skeletal mesh. Then in the advanced tab under that, we are going to go down to import morph targets, which by default will be set to false. You need to set that to true. That's everything you need to do. Right now, we can just import these. And when we open up this mesh and add it to the tabs here, uh, I said add it to the tabs here, you will see it imported the morph targets. And in Unreal, you can even go into the negative uh, because Everything a morph target really is, is saying move these vertices X amount uh, into X, Y, and Z position. So if it can do that with the positive direction, it can also do that with the negative direction, uh, which in general might not be very useful uh, most of the time, but it's very much a good thing to have control over. And as I said, uh, this can be influenced during runtime. So right now I just have a loop where it goes back and forth and back and forth between uh, being fully morphed and uh, fully unmorphed. But you can imagine that I can independently change the ears and the mouth and uh, make it dependent on some player actions or maybe even just use this as a technique to make idle animations for objects that never will loop. And that is something that we're going to be looking into in the next tutorial, more unreal techniques with these morph targets, because it's a very powerful tool to use for a variety of different things. So if you want to see that, you can see the card up on one of these corners of the screen. I never know which one. Or if that one isn't up yet, you can obviously always subscribe to stay up to date with when that one is coming out. So until the next time, I will see you all back then.